is up, fam. I am so excited about this video today. I hope that you guys are too. This is a lot of things coming together at once that we've talked about in the past. So one is that a lot of you guys said that you'd be down for a tutorial on how I do my flower crowns. I'm gonna put that at the end in case you don't care, which is totally allowed, but it is such a huge part of this costume. The rest of it is just kind of details. So I'm gonna go through like getting the look and getting the costume together and I'll put the flower crown tutorial at the end. I will put a timestamp right here for when it starts if that's all you came here for. The reason that this is so flower crown heavy is because today I am becoming sick Emma from Sharp Objects. If you guys haven't watched Sharp Objects, don't worry, I'm not going to spoil anything other than the fact that she has like a fever in this costume. She has dressed herself up as Persephone and she's having kind of an interesting sort of fever dream. It's kind of a fugue state. She's very, uh, very, very interesting as a character. She's really, really unbelievable and she's such an amazing actress, the girl who plays her. And uh, Sharp Objects is like an HBO show. If you haven't watched it, I'm kind of going out of order here, but uh, it's about a, a girl who kind of returns to her hometown in the South. There's murders and it's a mystery and it's just, it's very, very creepy and amazing and super well done. Uh, same author as Gone Girl. I today am becoming Creepy Emma and uh, I made this gorgeous, incredible flower crown to encapsulate her. The scale is a little bit larger than hers just because this is what they had at Michael's, but I am really excited about it. You guys know I'm never going to pass up an opportunity to make a flower crown. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and zoom you guys in and we're going to talk about just the very light face of makeup that we're going to do for, uh, for the costume purposes to make me look kind of feverish. And then we will go and do the hair as well. So let's zoom in. So the first thing that I'm going to do is pull out all of my Glossier goodies. We're gonna kind of look balmy and I want most of my skin to show through. So I'm just gonna start with the Glossier Rose Water Spray. Get my skin nice and fresh. I mean, she looks tired and she looks sort of like sunken in in her eyes and stuff, but the main thing is that she just kind of looks dewy and youthful. I'm not going to go like all over with anything on the skin. I'm actually just going to go with a little bit of the Hollywood Flawless Filter from uh, from Charlotte Tilbury. Get a little bit of a glow going and then I'll just move into the Glossier. Throw that around. And then I'm going to take my Glossier Stretch Concealer and just kind of even my skin tone out just ever so slightly in some of the places I have blemishes. I'm not going to put this under my eyes though because that is the main thing about this costume, about her face is that her under eyes are sunken in so much. I'm also excited about this costume because unlike when I cosplayed Eleven from Stranger Things, there's no bald cap or prostheses or anything like that involved here. There's no liquid latex. This is something I can put on, take off very easily because today is not Halloween. I am filming this earlier than that. And so uh, I'm actually still going to be able to wear this and hand out candy and things like that. So it's nice in that respect too. This is actually a really easy costume. So the next thing I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna put something underneath my eyes to kind of accentuate how icky I'm supposed to be feeling right now. So I'm going to go in with the Groundwork Paint Pot from MAC. This is like ages, ages, ages old. And I'm just going to accentuate right here. Make myself look a little bit more sunken in, kind of in the spot where I'm already sunken in. We're kind of contouring in an unflattering way, I guess. And I might even take a little bit of that and just kind of, you know, underneath my nose, kind of sink my cheekbones in a little bit. She has kind of a I don't know, like an undead vibe about her in this scene. She also has like some kind of redness around her, like her nose and stuff like that. And so I'm actually gonna use the Glossier Cloud Paint in Storm. I'm gonna throw a little bit of that on the back of my head because this really, I like it because it mimics really flushed cheeks, but that also means that it mimics like natural pinkness in your skin. And so we can kind of use that to our advantage, uh, just getting, kind of unflattering pinkness to my skin. So I'm taking this Sigma E60 uh, large shader brush and I'm really just kind of working the cloud paint so that it's really good and thin. And she's got a little bit around her nose. 
kind of right here where we all want to cover that up <laughs> with concealer because it tends to get red on a lot of us. And then she's also got kind of some, you know, pinkness going on up here, kind of around here. And then she's also really got like a flush to her cheeks, but not in a particularly healthy way. We're going to do kind of an all over cheek flush. I'm going to use this Eco Tools brush right here. This is actually what I use to put my cloud paint on usually, but we're going to kind of go all over the cheek as if like I have a fever flush, not like I'm trying to make my cheeks rosy. And a little goes such a long way with cloud paint and it looks crazy at first. And then you just kind of rub it in until it almost goes away. I think that that pretty much nails it. We might go a little bit further around the eyes, like the uh, the groundwork paint pot here. Just give me a little bit more. They really accentuate how sick she looks. And so kind of some darkness on the eyelids here, but this doesn't have to be super, super like dramatic or anything. I think that the main thing is actually keeping it light. The final touch on this, on the actual makeup look is, what I'm gonna use here. You don't have to do this, but anything that's gonna make your skin stay dewy. This is the Tatcha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist, and I'm just going to kind of spray that all over. And it makes your skin just kind of glossy, but if you use too much, it kind of makes your skin greasy in a good way. And I love all things Tatcha. And actually, when we get done, I'm going to also probably use a little bit of that to make my hair look a little bit greasy around the hairline too, because she's just kind of like in a fever sweat. Now, mm, this stuff kind of tastes sweet. We're gonna put some extensions in my hair and try and bring this look together. Okay, I have my flat iron here, and we're doing a flat iron instead of a curling iron because I want the curls to not be particularly uniform. I want them to kind of just be at the ends and also look a little bit like a natural curl. So um, I'm just gonna pin pieces of my hair up. I have some Luxie extensions here that I've had for a really long time. They are kind of sad, kind of busted, but it's fine. We're not trying to look glam today. And uh, I don't usually wear them because they actually break my hair off. And it's not just the Luxie extensions, just wearing extensions in general seems to break my hair off. My hair's just really weak. All right, I have a, this is just a regular like foiling comb. Actually, it's a long tail foiling comb. I'm not sure what it looks like, but I'm trying to take kind of V shaped sections back there because we want everything to kind of like hide. It's not a huge deal because I'm gonna be wearing a flower crown. It's gonna pretty much hide whatever I want it to hide. One of the best ways to get extensions to stay in your hair, especially if your hair is clean, is to kind of rough it up. This is the Beach Club Volumizing Texture Spray from IGK. I'm really in love with this stuff. You just kind of roughen up a little bit of the texture of your hair. You can use a dry shampoo, you could use uh, even a hairspray. Although if you try and tease on top of a hairspray, it might break your hair depending on how strong your hair is. Then you kind of lift up where you're going to be attaching them and you kind of tease them so that you get a firmer base on your hair because if you just try and pin them into your regular hair, it will probably break it off and it might even just slide out. And you can do like, you know, smaller teased sections than that, but I'm not, again, not really worried about this looking glam. I have two pieces right here that are pretty long and they are just two clips each and I'm going to kind of put those they're open right now. So just kind of put one there, one there, and then going to put same thing on the other side. This is why I don't do hair tutorials, you guys, is because it's it's kind of a pain showing you guys the back of my head and not really knowing what it looks like until I'm editing. All right, and then we take down another section here and section her off. Doesn't have to be super precise. Gonna rough her up. All right, so we have a three clip section that's going in the back right now. And then we also have, oh, we have two three clippers. Awesome, so this will be great. And those are about the same length. So that's going to go right here, kind of similarly, but this is a wider part of my head and so the three clip ones will probably fit pretty nicely. I have no idea what this looks like, guys. I'm definitely not like 
proficient in this, so if it looks crazy from the back, sorry. It'll just lock right on there when you do that. Boom, like that. <laughs> kind of starting to look the part, y'all. I think that that's actually fine. And we're going to curl all this. These are going, the long ones are gonna get like tighter curls and then this is all gonna get kind of medium curls. And fortunately, once this is done, I can just kind of take these extensions out and put them back in later and I don't have to recurl them. So she does have these kind of tight curls. Why are you, oh, I need to turn the heat up on this guy because this is not my hair. <laughs> it takes a little more heat to curl, huh? Mine curls so easily. And just hold the root of the extension so that you're not pulling on your own hair because it'll just pull the extension right out. I mean, my hair, all you have to do is just, there we go, is just suggest that it curls and it curls like crazy. So I'm not used to this kind of a little bit more stubborn hair. It smells like hair school. It smells like mannequin hair. Oh, and I guess I could have curled these before I put them in my hair, but it's actually really hard because you don't have anything to clip it to. So I've turned the heat down. I'm gonna let her chill for just a second because I'm about to put this on my regular hair. And then this is where the curls start getting a little bit bigger and wavier. And that's why I wanted to use a flat iron instead of a curling iron. Just making some gentle kind of waves around my face here. And it's okay if everything's not perfect, especially up here because you know, it's like she's, she's bedridden. She's like, you know, kind of hobbling around her house. She's not exactly looking like perfect all the time. I like long hair. <laughs> my hair has never been this long in my life or this thick, obviously. And so, um, yeah, I enjoy it. <laughs> I enjoy it greatly. I wish I had like long, luxurious hair. So this, she has like this, and then it kind of, ooh, that's so hot. I still need to turn that down. My hair is not, does not need that much heat. Getting this gentle, wave going here. I'm gonna take these ends and just get a little bit of curl out of them and it's gonna kind of fall. And then once all of that is done, we'll just kind of muss it up a little bit with a little bit more of this stuff. This stuff's incredible, by the way. I used it on my wedding day. It just makes everything kind of like a little bit rougher, but it's like hairspray without being hairspray. And then I will just take my comb and kind of sort this out a little bit, but also turn it upside down and just kind of tease in certain spots to make it look a little bit more crazy and a little bit bigger. She's got this amazing head of hair. And to let like this stuff kind of match my hair a little bit better. Okay, and then like I said, I'm just gonna take a little bit of this and kind of, I know it's like not a cute look, but the whole idea is that her hair is a little bit kind of greasy in the front and stuck to her face a little bit. All right, I'm going to put on the nightgown that I bought to go with this. I got it on Amazon, uh, it was $27, not a big deal, and I'll be right back. And this is the final look with the hair and the flower crown. Let me zoom you guys out. So this is a very easy costume. All you really need to do is figure out some way, if your hair is not already long, to make your hair long, you know, wig or extensions or whatever. Make your face look kind of like sick and zombified. So I will now throw to the tutorial. If you want to skip it, then, you know, I totally understand. It's kind of crafty. It's not really the theme of my channel, but there were some people who really wanted to see it. And so I will throw it to that now. What's up, fam? Smells like hot glue in here. And I just sat on some needle nose pliers, so we're off to a good start. So I have a bag of flowers right here. I made a really bad time lapse a really long time ago trying to show how I made my flower crowns. Um, needless to say, <laughs> we've all come a really long way since then. I'm a fully functioning adult at this point, making a flower crown on the internet. I start with this floral wire that's been wrapped in paper. It is called stem wire and it's like $2.50 for six of them at Michael's. And if you aren't on the Michael's app, get on the Michael's app, you get discounts for everything. So, uh, so there's that. I take these and, um, you know, I've made 
god, <laughs> dozens of these things by now. And I just start by twisting them together in one kind of logical spot. And I make sure that the floral wire kind of sticks out instead of in, just because you don't really want something poking you in the head all night. She has hers kind of sitting like right here. I've made some that kind of curb, you know, kind of dip down and stuff like that. And I think it's fun to sort of start with different skeletons of them. But since we're following a very specific template here, and then leave yourself a little bit of room because the flower stems are going to take up some room and make it bulky. And so kind of, if it's, you know, a little bit too big, that's okay. Too small is a problem. My, uh, my friend Leslie, my bachelorette, she made one and it was really, really cute. She was done really fast. She was like, wow, why did I finish so quickly? And then she put it on her head and it was just this little wreath that sat on top of her head. She ended up having to like cut it up and like redo it. It was really, really funny though. It was super pretty, but it was like, you know, for a baby. You know, keep in mind this will stay movable throughout the process. So if you don't get it the exact right shape, that's okay, but you want it to be about the right size. So I just have it kind of so that it comfortably sits on my head like that. And then I will use more of those floral wires to reinforce the crown shape. I've done other things in the past. I've, uh, I've braided it before to make the headband that I wore in my Woodland Witchy recreation. That's actually braided and it makes it more stable. You could also just start with a headband, but I find that the best reason to work with it this way is that it kind of creates little imperfections, and those are spots where you can twist things into later. And also really good little pockets for, uh, for hot glue and, and stems and such. So like I said, this comes with six pieces. I usually use four just to make a really lightweight, but also, you know, fairly, fairly sturdy crown. Then I will move into smaller floral wire a lot of times um, to create even more space and just kind of wrap around the initial flowers and then I move directly into just relying on hot glue. Hot glue is magical. Again, we're not really like totally sure on the shape here, but you do kind of want to decide where you want the front to be <laughs> and then uh, and then kind of continue. And I think actually this needs to be the front just because it's got so much more scaffolding here. And so we can kind of mold her. And then I have the wire wire that's very easy to bend. And then I also have the stem wire that's really tiny and it's wrapped in thread. Either one is fine. This one's gonna be easier to work with, but this one is, uh, is sturdier. You don't have to wrap it as many times. We're working from a photo here. And these, honestly, it was Slim Pickens over there at Michael's. <laughs> They are moving into Christmas season, and so their entire floral department has been taken over by glitter. Everything was gold and glittery. All this stuff was on super sale. I literally got everything that I needed for this crown for $10, but, you know, lots of coupons, but it was slim pickings. Like, I had to buy a bouquet instead of, like, individual flowers, and I'm still going to be working with probably some stuff I have left over from previous flower crowns, so just kind of keep that in mind. I'll stick the photo we're working from on the screen right here, and there she is, gorgeous Miss Anna. So her roses kind of start down here. It like looks like it's almost kind of wilted towards her face, which is something you want to kind of establish early on. Ow! <laughs> That's a hot glue gun. I'm okay. I reacted quickly enough. I'm an idiot. I'm a huge idiot. I'm just like trying to talk while I'm doing this. But yeah, you want to go ahead and establish those kinds of shapes early on so that then you can just kind of work into them. We have two of these big awesome roses, which are very similar to hers. And those are the ones that are going to kind of do this. Mine's gonna probably be a lot bigger than hers though, it looks like. Yeah, because her flowers are really small. That's okay. We all know I'm big and extra. So yeah, let's go ahead and start with those. So I'm going to start by putting that right there because that's where it's going to, to sit. And there's actually a wire inside this stem. They're all different, but this one has a wire inside the stem, which is it's nice, we're not gonna use the whole thing. I'm just gonna get it kind of wrapped around and in the right place. And then I will take some of our wrapped, you know, smaller floral wire, kind of stick it through one of the holes here to get it started. And then I will kind of start, you know, wrapping it around to secure it, slapping myself in the face with it. I'm trying to show you as I go here. You know, I'm not a craft vlogger. This isn't something that I would typically have the uh, camera set up to do. I would love to have like one that you know, look straight down on the whole situation, but this is kind of a one-off. You know, unless you guys end up falling in love with my, my crafting skills, 
Maybe I'll start a crafting channel. I don't know. I've never been much of a crafter. So I'm going to leave that open because we're going to also be attaching another one kind of symmetrically the other way. Just kind of thinking through this. And I also have my needle nose pliers right here, which I don't even end up using for the plier portion most of the time. I use them because they have this really great kind of wire cutter on the inside. And then I just do that and it just pops off. Easy squeezy. And all this stuff is really inexpensive at Michael's. So there's the beginning right there. And then we're going to take the other rose. We're going to position her accordingly. I'm just watching myself in my monitor here. There we go. And we are leaving, you can see the stem right here. We're leaving a little bit of room because we're going to fill in a lot of that negative space with more more flowers and so you don't want everything to be just like super tight like stuck to the crown because then you can't kind of like everything starts to mush together all the flowers start to kind of get too clustered together and they like look flat if you want to kind of keep the aesthetic of the flowers looking really organic you want to make sure that like they have room to all be as open as possible i mean i'm just as guilty as the next flower crown creator of uh, you know getting getting overzealous and kind of like clustering them too closely together, but try and avoid it. There we go, and use our wires here. So yeah, now we have those in the right place. She has kind of these other clusters of like lighter colored flowers, and then some daisies, and then it moves into these kind of funny little berries in the front, and we're gonna be doing that that with those. So. I love this color palette though, so, so pretty. So right above these is sort of a lighter colored flower. I'm going to just use these to do that. And we wanna get those kind of in a similar position, you know, so, you know, uh, there-ish. There and start wrapping them. And you see what's happening here is that we're creating, like I said, all these kind of funny little intricacies right here that are going to be really good for tucking smaller stuff in and for hot glue to grab onto. And so there, like that wire in the stem is really, really helpful. And I can then take a little bit more. I'm going to take a smaller floral wire, like a skinny one. What the hell is that? And just start wrapping it. I'm going to get her started and wrap it around her and we don't again need the whole stem we're just going to get it secured really nicely and all of this wire work is going to get hidden a lot of people put floral tape in there i've never found i think i did that one time and i just found it to be more trouble than it was worth because you end up hiding all of your seams anyway um okay that's not quite as secure as i want it to be so i will take one of the Thick with two C's ones and just pull it really really tight and once they also get more clustered together you'll be able to kind of hot glue things into like to each other which is nice like the you know if you want a petal to be open then you can kind of glue it to the thing next to it and it'll stay open so we're leaving some of these wires kind of out because I want to use like reuse them if we can so all right, we're just gonna stick this one similarly to the previous one and wrap her little wire around. Use that to secure our other big pink flower. You can always kind of go in and re-tighten your wires too. Make sure everything's really secure. So, yes, this is errant and odd, but now you see we have her like little wilty guys. So we've got the wilty ones kind of around my face and then these kind of point like upwards like that. And then we'll fill all of this in with other, other florals. Sorry, my nose is running so badly. All right. And then she's got like leaves and then a bunch of other little flowers. We're probably going to take some liberties here because I, I don't know. I'm just a little bit, I'm a little bit more extra. Going to fill in all of these gaps with these little roses right here and these little daisies right here. And the way that we do that is just by grabbing, you can actually pull these, whoa, cool. You can usually pull these clusters kind of off one at a time. Everything's put together that way. So that way you have these kind of lightweight pieces that you can start like just hot gluing into place. I just 
start putting hot glue into little pockets and pretty much all of them are put together this way where they have everything can kind of come apart and if they can't you can always kind of nip them with your needle nose pliers and always attempt to kind of keep your bearings on what you're working on like you know what's the front what's the back what's the top what's the bottom kind of thing so you can see you start to make this really full pretty flower cluster we'll just do that on the other side as well and then you kind of fill in the middle okay here's another thing i want to show you guys so this comes kind of in its own little tube and so when you yank on it like obviously it's got this nice green stem and when you yank on it it's just a really nice floral wire inside and i will just do what i did here and kind of thread that through the rest of the foliage so i don't have to hot glue it like once it's in a spot that i like kind of there-ish um i'll just kind of start wrapping it around from the the back here and you can use it just like you did the other floral wire so I don't even have to hot glue it I can just wrap it around and it just kind of reinforces the rest of the flower crown hey dudes uh, I had to take a break yesterday because I started filming with like 15 minutes until I had to be somewhere <laughs> I just got really excited and wanted to work on my flower crown. So as you can see, this is where we're at still. Uh, I'm still a blooming, blooming idiot, and they look kind of funny. They're just like, Grink, like these big ears or something right now. But we're going to fill the middle in right here. So back to this view. There it is. We're gonna also fill in with leaves. That's another big thing on, on her uh, crown. And it's also what gives any flower crown its kind of life is kind of fitting some leaves into it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is take some of these like berries right here and they have hot glued that on there. Oh, okay, well that wasn't that hard. And I'm actually just going to clip this a little shorter since we're kind of working with a, a tangled web here and I'm going to take this kind of across the front weaving her in like that but this one is not oh it does it has a little wire in it hard to really tell I think they kind of go both ways like this but I don't know I kind of just want it to be sort of organic like that and then what happened to the stem there? It got shoved through. Yep, and then we just kind of pull her through, wrap her around, and I'm just negotiating with the wires, you know, in here inside of the scaffolding of it all. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, we will probably hot glue those down just because they're sort of errant right now. They're like lit. Um, and I want them to, to lie down, but we want to put some more flowers in there first. So we want some daisies with their stems still on because they kind of stick out from her head. So that's where like this, this goes is kind of sticking out like that. And so that's where I just kind of take my hot glue and I push it like into some of the weird gaps that we've created here. Come on, baby. There we go. Might not be completely hot yet. Lord knows I'll learn by shoving my finger in it. And I'm gonna just let that live right there in that crevasse. And when that dries, it's gonna be cool because it kind of hangs down, adds a little more life. She's got a few more that are like that kind of coming out from different places. I'm gonna kind of build up a little, or a big bead of hot glue and just let that park right there until it dries. Hot glue is pretty magical, you guys. It is pretty amazing stuff. So no pink roses, but I did find these little guys and I'm gonna use those. I think that they look really pretty, like that. I'm gonna actually glue that to the inside of this flower right here. Okay, and then we're just gonna fill the front end with a little bit more uh, like daisies and stuff. And then we'll just move into leaves. So we've got tons of leaves and they all, again, kind of come off of the stems the same way. I'm just gonna show you like this. <laughs> the leaves uh, come in like, you know, they come off in little, however they're put on there, they'll come off in clusters. And then what you do is you just kind of look at the flower crown the way that you're making it, like the way that you're gonna wear it 
and you just kind of start sticking them in places. And this is actually really easy and really rewarding, I feel like, because like the leaves always make things look so finished and so like full, like that. And if you want to break these apart, you can. There's no, you know, like rules about this because just because they come in a cluster doesn't mean you have to use them in a cluster, but I like to be able to kind of like tuck them in like that, so. So really just like build your confidence about this because it's not as hard as it looks. Like you really can't do anything wrong here. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to recreate something that already exists and so there's a little bit of accuracy involved, but usually when you're making a flower crown, it's just kind of whatever you want. And it's okay if you kind of have to push some of the leaves out of the way to put it on your face because then like this will kind of frame your face in, in a really pretty way. Ooh, I just got it on my finger. If you get it on your finger, resist the urge to rip the glue off because if you do that, you'll rip your skin off. If you wait for it to dry, it'll just peel right off. Like hot glue lesson number one. So that also kind of like pushed the berries out in a nice way. So Hopefully that looks okay when it's on. Very Persephone. So yeah, you can see it just kind of rolls off. Like it's not the most comfortable thing in the world, but it's better than ripping your skin off. I think we need like a couple more leaves like behind here, you know, so that you have this nice backdrop on there. And there's all this really great kind of like wire scaffolding in there that you can use to hide all of your seams and get like a really good grip on the hot glue. Okay, so that is really like the essence of the front of her flower crown and I'm just going to kind of fill in the back with a little bit more flowers and foliage so that it's not just this bare like stem. And the easiest way to do that is to actually just take, especially if you're looking for something that's only going to uh, be on the front, you just kind of want this, you know, facade. Really you can take these leaves, cut them apart and just wrap them around this. You could use floral tape too. So that is what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to rip them apart. Just take it and you glue it down like that. And it's okay if kind of the bottom of it sticks up too. I guess I could start from the back and like layer them and not have to lift them back up. So there's that. See, and it just makes like a pretty, a prettier texture than just leaving that stem raw. And you can take other leaves, like I have other leaves here, kind of decorate in there. I've also got little pine cones, which is adorable. I don't know, well, you know, and we'll just kind of play. Uh, some of these are put together really, like you know when you've bought nice ones because they're harder to get apart. I think that the coolest part is that it's not very fragile. Once the glue has dried, it's not super fragile. So like I've had some of these for years and they never fall apart. I'm gonna take this little baby right here and I'm gonna stick that right there to kind of hide the seam. And we've created kind of a nice gap right there between a flower and a leaf that we can stick something in and it'll nestle really nicely, like that. It's cool because then by every angle, you know, you can kind of catch other little details. I'm gonna start going in the other direction with the leaves now. It's so hot, hence hot glue. How about that? How about that? This time I wised up and I'm going in the other direction, layering them, makes more sense. All right. Yeah, it's way faster too. And I think we need one more to kind of finish that out. And then I will also hide that seam between the leaves and the flowers with like another piece of something I find. <laughs> Stick that in there and that's gonna hide that kind of like ugly little gap in there. That ought to do it. So, I mean, you guys watched that come together in like under an hour. So what we've done here is built just a little bit of like three dimensionality. Like I, you know, you don't want everything to just lay flat. I've done that. And it looks okay, but it just looks like one big flower, one big texture. Like the whole idea is that this kind of sticks out in different places. The other thing you can do is take some of the little things and kind of tuck them in to this back part so that there's some kind of visual interest there. So I don't like 
love this entire thing, but if we kind of chop it, it becomes this really cool little like texture that I can stick in here, like that or something. It's just like little stuff, little tiny things. And I mean, I know that probably a lot of you guys are watching this being like, wow, this is really freaking tedious, Khaki. If you love it, like I love it, um, it doesn't feel tedious. You just kind of want to make it perfect. It doesn't feel like work. And I don't want to do like too much of that or make it too like symmetrical. So what I'll do is just kind of stick one like coming down like that. Take some little baby flowers. You can actually, instead of pulling the whole stem off, you can just pull them off the stem like that. We can just use the hot glue because they're very light at that point and you can use the hot glue to just kind of stick them in little places. So I will stick one right there. There we go. And we just kind of hide that seam with the other leaf. Hold it for a minute. We're gonna do that a couple more times. Do one going up right here. Oh well, we ended up with a little bit of symmetry anyway, but whatever. I mean, there's symmetry and then there's balance and I think that this is really balanced. And we'll just stick one right there. And the beauty of this is that it dries so quickly that I can pretty much just put this on my head. Now on to the rest of the costume. So this is it. I know I'm like a really happy, sick Emma, but uh, I just love doing this kind of thing. These like really fun kind of niche cosplays because it doesn't matter if anybody else gets it. It matters that I get it. And I just really love nailing a character like this. I just think it's so much fun. I feel really transformed. It's just, that's what Halloween's about. And so uh, if you guys liked this, give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, guys, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. We are about to enter gratitude month or no buy November, if you guys want to call it that. So make sure you stay tuned. We have some really fun videos coming up. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Happy Halloween. And, uh, and I will see you guys in the next one.